Good evening, church. As we get ready to start our Good Friday service, the scripture that I want us to look at this evening comes out of March, Mark chapter 15. And as you get a little free time, go to your quiet place, if you will, and I want you to read chapter 15. Read it slow. Let it penetrate into your, your mind and your heart and your soul. And I believe you will realize what Jesus went through the last day of his life, if you will. I'd like to start with an opening prayer. Lord, our journey ends here at the foot of the cross. Darkness is falling. The crowd is restless. Our heart breaks as you cry, pierce the night. Stay with us, Lord, for we need you close at hand. And when the night is over and the journey continue, gives us the courage to stay with you. Amen. Mark chapter 15. Listen to the word. Quite lengthy, but listen, please. Immediately in the morning, the chief priest held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council and they bound Jesus. They led him away and delivered him to Pilate. Then Pilate asked him, are you the king of Jews? He answered and said to him, it is as you say. And the chief priest accused him of many things, but he answered nothing. Then Pilate asked him again saying, do you answer nothing? See how many things they have testified against you? But Jesus still answered nothing, so that part Pilate marveled. Now at the feast, he was accustomed to releasing one prisoner to them, whomever they requested. And there was one named Barabbas, who was chained with his fellow rebels. They had committed murder in the rebellion. Then the multitude, crying aloud, began to ask him to do just as he had always done for them. But Pilate answered, saying, But do you want me to release to you the king of Jews? For he knew that the chief priest had handed him over because of envy. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd so that he should rather release Barabbas to them. Pilate answered and said to them, What then do you want me to do with him, whom you call the king of Jews? Then, so they cried out again, Crucify him. Then Pilate said to him, Why? What evil has he done? But they cried out all the more, Crucify him. So Pilate, wanting to gratify the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and he delivered Jesus after he had scourged him to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him away into the hall called Praetorium, and they called together the whole garrison. And they clothed him with purple, and they twisted a crown of thorns, put it on his head, and began to salute him, Hail, King of Jews! Then they struck him on the head with a reed and spat on him and bowing the knee, they worshiped him. And when they had mocked him, they took the purple off him, put his clothes on him and led him out to crucify him. Then they compelled a certain man, Simon, a Cyrene, the father of Alex, Xander, and Rufus. And he was coming out of the country passing by to bear his cross. And they brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated a place of a skull. Then they gave him wine mingled with myrrh to drink, but he did not take it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his garments, casting lots for them to determine whatever man should take. Now it was the third hour they crucified him, and the inscription said, the inscription said, the king of the Jews. With him, they also crucified two robbers, one on his right, the other on his left. So the scripture was fulfilled, which said, 
and he was numbered with the transgressors. And those who passed by blasting, blasphemed him, wagging their heads and saying, Aha! You who destroyed the temple and built it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests also, mocking among themselves with the scribes, said, He saved others. Him he, in him he cannot save. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, descend now from the cross, that we may see and believe. Even those who were crucified with him reviled him. Now when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the, the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Now some of those who stood by when they heard that said, Look, he is calling for Elijah. Then someone ran and filled a sponge full of sour wine and put it on a reed and offered it to him to drink, saying, Let him alone. Let us see if Elijah will come to take him down. And Jesus cried out with a loud voice and breathed his last. Then the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. So when the centurion who stood opposite him saw that he cried out like this and breathed his last, he said, truly, this man was the son of God. There was also a woman looking on from afar um, among who was Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, Delise, Jose, and Salome, who also followed him and ministered to him while he was in Galilee, and many other women who came up with him to Jerusalem. Now when evening had come, because it was preparation day, that is the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent council member who was himself waiting for the kingdom of God, coming and taking courage, went into Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate marveled that he was already dead and summons the centurion and asked him if he had been dead for some time. So when he found out from the centurion, he granted the body to Joseph. Then he brought fine linen, took him down, and wrapped him in the linen, and he laid him in a tomb which had been hewn out of the rock, and rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. And Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Jose observed where he was laid. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you and praise you for this day. You're awesome and we love you. In Christ's name, amen. Now you see the Jews had taken away, I mean, the Romans had taken away the Jews' capital punishment. And in order for the Jewish leaders to have Jesus crucified, then they had to go to a Roman official and get him to sign off, if you will. Now this is what the Jewish leaders wanted. They wanted him to be crucified. They wanted his death to come from a cross. Because they believed this was a, a, this kind of death was a curse from God. You see that in Deuteronomy 21, 22, and 23. They did. And you see, the Jewish leaders, they didn't want the people to feel like that Jesus was blessed by God. But they want the, Jew, the people to feel like that, that God had cursed Jesus' ministry. Now you see, when the Jewish leaders got ready to take Jesus to Pilate, and they was going to tell him that the reason was, was blaspheming, Pilate would have laughed at them. So they had to come up with some false charges. And they, they told Pilate that Jesus was the one who told the people not to pay their taxes. Jesus said that he was the king of Jews. Also, Jesus was the one that caused many of the riots around the countryside. Now, this, this really kind of concerned Pilate. It did because of tax invasion, treason, and terrorism. That's some things that he was concerned about. You see that in Luke 23, verse 2, it was. Now, now also, too, it talks about uh, Barabbas. 
Barabbas was arrested with the others who started a rebellion. Now, the Jews would have thought of him as a hero. They would have. But you see, the Jews despised the Romans. They didn't like to pay their tax. They didn't like their government. They didn't like their gods. They didn't. But also, too, the Romans despised the, the Jews because they didn't like to go down and break up their disputes and the disagreements that they had a lot of times. They didn't. And you see, think about this, church. This is a perfect formula for a rebellion. It is. Think about it. So as, as where's the group of people? Where's the group of people that was there? I mean, the disciples, they left. There was a few followers of the Jewish leaders, maybe. There was. But everybody else had disappeared. The group, just a few days before that, yelled, Hosanna, Hosanna, realized that Jesus wasn't going to do what they wanted, wasn't going to, to save them from Rome. So they, they kind of disappeared as well. They did. And you see, when the Jewish leaders took Jesus to Pilate, and Pilate knew that, that the Jewish leaders hated him, they hated his government, hated what he stood for. They come to him and wanted him to, to uh, sentence Jesus to death because of tre treason. And the death and the penalty was death. It was crucifixion. It was. And it, crucifixion for the Romans and the, the only ones that died that way was slaves or non non Roman people, but the Jewish leaders wanted Jesus to die on the cross because he would be looked at as a rebel, as a slave, and his claim to be the king of Jews wouldn't have amounted to anything. It would have been false. It would have, and this is what the Jewish leaders wanted to happen. They did. And they also wanted the Romans to say this because they wanted it, it looked like it was all the Romans' idea instead of the Jewish leaders or anybody else. They did. And you see, Peter, you see, so who was, who was guilty of, of Jesus' death? Now think about this, if you will. Who was guilty? The disciples, they left him. Peter denied him. Judas betrayed him, and, and those who, who followed him kept quiet. They didn't say anything. The Roman soldiers, they beat him. They beat him. They did. Now, you see, there was a region outside of, uh, of there was a re the, the region where Pilate was in charge was kind of a hot and dusty outpost. It was. He was sent there with a small army. And his, he was to keep the peace, he was. Now, you see, he had heard about uh, outbursts and riots before. And when the people came and wanted him to convict him, he knew that Jesus was not guilty. But he wanted to please the people. And he didn't want to have any more riots because he wanted to get moved. He wanted to leave there, and he was afraid that another riot, and, and they threatened to call Caesar and bring Caesar into it too. So he told the people what they wanted to hear in order to please them. You know, church, sometimes, sometimes in order to, to get away from some drama, we might tell people what they want to hear. But now get this, church. Get this. God doesn't want us to be people pleasers. We ought to be please God, we are. And you see, if we please God, and sometimes when we please God and do things for God, then yes, the, plea, the people are unhappy. But if we please God, God's gonna bless us and bless the work that we do for Him. And you see, we're not to be people pleasers. Come on, church. We're to be God pleasers, we are. Now, you see, there was colonies of Jews outside of Judea. There was. Now, there was a man, the scripture calls him Simon, and he was from Cyrene. He was from northern Africa. And he came down to Jerusalem to be a part of the Passover meal. Now, think about this. 
You know, when him and his two boys, Rufus and Alexander, left, they had no idea. They had no idea what laid in store for them, did they? I mean, they thought it was just going to be a regular Passover meal. They was going to enjoy it, and it was a week-long celebration, and then they was going to turn around and go home, and, and, and life was going to return to normal. But, you know, Simon was picked to carry the cross of Jesus. Now, as I thought about this, you know, he got to rub elbows with Jesus. He did. He got to see Jesus and all the things that he went through. And I believe his heart broke for them. And you see his two sons, Rufus and Alexander, according to Romans 6.13, they was a part of the early church. So this might have been a life-changing experience for them as well. But you know, sometimes church, we get up and we think it's just going to be a normal day. We're going to do what we've done for many days. But maybe God has picked us that we're going to be a part of somebody else's miracle. And, you know, we should always, always be open to what is going on around us. Because we could be used by God for somebody else's miracle or to help somebody else along or to encourage somebody else. And we don't even realize it. I don't believe so, uh, I don't believe Simon and his two boys had any idea how they was going to be used by God. And, and think about that, church. We, too, could be used by God. Now, the Bible talks about casting lots. Now, according to Psalms 22, 18, you know, they could, the Roman soldiers could keep the clothing of those who had been crucified and they was going to cast lots, much like us throwing dice or drawing straws, if you will, to see who was going to get Jesus closing. It was. Now, you see, crucifixion was one of the worst and feared kind of death there was. And normally, the person who was going to be crucified would have to carry their own cross. Now, normally the Romans would take the longest route they could find in order that as they went down the streets, people would see this and see that person carrying his cross as, as to say, look at here, if you mess up, this is going to happen to you. It can happen to you as well. So behave yourself. And, and death would come from suffocation. You know, they would hang on the cross and after a while, their strength would give out, and they would suffocate. Now, there was many different ways. Jesus was nailed to the cross. Some was tied with ropes, and there's many different versions of the cross, as I was at one place that I read. It was. Now, Jesus could have saved himself. He could have. He could have saved himself. He didn't have to go through the pain and the suffering and humiliation, but he wanted to because that was part of his love, it was. And also too, you know, he could have killed his enemies, but he loved his enemies. You see, we as, as Christians, we are to love our enemies. We are th to love those who hurt us. We are to love those who laugh and make fun and spit on us for being who we are. We are to love them. We are to be like Jesus. You know, one place I read said that we are to be Christ's representative. We are to strap on Jesus' sandals and go and do and say as he would go, do, and say. We would. Now, you see, also, too, it talks about the, the curtains. Now, the curtains was in the Holy of Holies. It was. It was kind of a curtain to separate God from the people. Now, the only one that could go in there would be the high priest. And he would go in there on atonement day once a year to sacrifice for the people's sins. Now, you see, the scripture tells us. Now, I love this. Kind of picture, the, with, uh, picture this with me, if you will. When Jesus took his last breath, the curtain, the curtain, and it was really heavy. And it would, was ripped from the top all the way down to the bottom. It was open up, open up, that we can go to God anytime, any place, anywhere. 
Christ was made available to us the moment that he took his last breath in that curtain. We can go to him. We don't have to go to a priest. We don't have to go and rely on somebody else to do it for us. We can go ourselves. In fact, Christ, Christ loves it when we come to him and even with our problems, but also with our praise and just giving praise for who he is because he is awesome. Now, also, too, you see, John and James was two brothers. And they asked for uh, Jesus. They wanted to sit on his left and on his right when he come in his kingdom. They wanted the place of, of authority, if you will. And Jesus told them, you know, really, you don't know what you're asking for. Just moments before Jesus got ready to, to start his kingdom, if you will. On his left was a criminal. On his right was a criminal. And they was both dying right alongside of Jesus as he got ready to start his kingdom. Now, Luke tells us that one of the thieves, one of the thieves repented. And Jesus is quoted as saying, from this day on, you will be with me in, in paradise. Think about that. So once again, once again, this is a Good Friday service. I challenge you, if you will, if you will, to please read Mark 15, take your time and just kind of soak in as I did what Jesus went through because he went through this for me and you because he loved us, he did. And like I said last week, it wasn't the nails that held him on the cross, it was his love for me and you. That's love, church.